Hey everyone, uh, I got a really great video uh, for you today. Uh, got my friend Brandon Gonzalez with me. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Michael. Thank you very much for joining me, given how busy you are. Uh, I, I think this yeah. is going to be a particularly interesting video, both for agents and yeah. for investors, because what Brandon and I are going to do is we're going to play two roles. Uh, I'm going to play the experienced out-of-town investor, because if you follow my channel for any length of time, you know I live in Mountain View and invest in Fresno which is a two and a half hour drive one way. Uh, and then Brandon is going to play the very experienced and very knowledgeable agent broker, um, you know, just all around a uh, great individual on that side. And we're going to, we're going to ask each other's question because I think I can't tell you how many times I, I see a text Brandon or an email or a comment that says looking for investor friendly agent. And yeah. I think that's, um, I think that's misguided, I think. So why don't I pass it to you, let you introduce yourself to the channel, and, and uh, I'll be quiet for a little bit. All right. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me on here. Uh, again, name Brandon Gonzalez. I am um, a broker owner for Iron Key Real Estate. Uh, I've been in the business since 2005. I started off in title and escrow. So I do have, I had access, great access to some of the best brokerages in town. So um, it, it helped me build quite a network. So when I got into sales in 2009, I dived head in uh, first, head first in, and um, and then worked and managed a, a larger franchisee corporate brokerage, and then, like I mentioned, then got into my own here in the last two years. Um, it's exposed me to a lot, as I mentioned, and it got me into uh, leadership with the association. I'm I'm this year's president. I'll be, you know, obviously my term will be coming to to an end here at the end of the month, but uh, that that too has allowed me to build a network up and down the state. And talk about some of the things that you, you know, that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, and it has, you know, kind of brought up some of those questions about how we can coexist with out of area investors. And so I'm excited about this conversation, and, and that's uh, basically me in a nutshell. Yeah, and, and again, I, I went to Brandon, right? I, I could have gone to lots of different folks. Uh, I have a I have a decent network, uh, but yeah. Brandon was my guy. He's uh, he he has that kind of. He's been there, done that. He's invested long enough to know the different parts of market cycles and, um, you know, consider him a friend. So uh, we'll, we'll just jump in. So, so Brandon, we're going to pretend like I'm an out-of-state newbie picking up the phone and, and calling you. Let's assume for the moment that I have some cash. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's pick a number, 100 grand or so. And, right. you know, I call you up. We connect or you call me back, however it works out. And, um, you know, I tell you, I'm looking for a deal. What, uh, you know, right. what do you do next? What kind of, what, where does that go for you? Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because when I got in the business, um, I was fortunate enough, I got teamed with a, a savvy commercial investor and he kind of came at me in that way. So, Hey, I've got, you know, X amount of dollars and I, and I want to get going, you know, and this residential thing. So the first question I asked is, okay, so what's your time frame? You know, mm -hmm. obviously he mentioned what he was working with and, in his budget but after that it was so what's your time frame yep okay and uh, are we wanting to flip are we wanting to hold okay and what's your what's your you know daily weekly monthly commitment to, to seeing properties yeah. are you going to give me are you going to give me that full responsibility so th there was a number of questions that you know um not only did, you know especially for he being a newbie there were questions he didn't know he should be asking. So I, I had to do some more research. Yeah. I had to talk, you know, I was talking with some experienced agents that uh, had that managed property and that had their own investment portfolio to figure, you know, what's the most important thing to you when you got started? You know, what's the most important thing to you now? Right. And, uh, and, and I took that perspective and then brought it back to him. But um, yeah, you know, and then, but the, the most important thing of all those questions was their commitment because you know, I was getting ready to, to become a gopher, you know, I was going to dive down below and, 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 you know, go through the, the different channels to find, you know, what wasn't on the market, what was on the market, how can we, you know, chip away at it. And if I was going to put in that type of work and, you know, sometimes potentially, you know, um, it, it just really depends on who they were and really yeah. trying to chisel them down, but in, in the right way, if I was going to put myself out there, I wanted to make sure that there was a commitment level. So, uh, yeah, so I hope that kind of answers maybe. Question. Yeah, you did. Let me summarize it while you, you could think of a, a question for me next. Really what you said there is, is, is imperative. We as, again, we're doing long distance land or buyers at this point or investors. Um, a, 
you know, you need to appreciate that that person on the other end of that call, you're going to ask to do a lot of legwork for you because, again, they're in the market. They're going to be doing the things that Brandon talked about, looking for off-market deals, looking for, for deals that maybe are listed, but you can chip away at or, or, or get lower prices and, and look for stress. Um, that's, that's not free, right? And, again, Brandon's doing this uh, or anyone in that position is going to be doing that with a thought of some payoff in the future, right? Uh, he doesn't do, right. he doesn't get paid for doing good homework, right? The, the, the way yeah. this transactions are put together is you're paid when there's a closing. And, um, you know, I don't, uh, I don't always get a feeling that investors appreciate that. And I, I'm glad that we sort of started here. Yeah, yeah, no. And so what, what is it that you think when you first got started, and, and I know you've gone quite a, a different, few different mm-hmm. channels, but what are, what was one of the most important things that you were looking for in an agent when you got started investing? Yeah. So that's, I'm glad that's your first question. The thing that I would have, the, the thing I didn't get that I wish I had gotten, right? This is very at the back of the beginning, right? So I think your questions up front are great. I think we need to appreciate that at least some investors, even if they have money, they still come with the sort of um, almost ready fire aim approach, which is particular, you know, yeah. they're, they're almost want to go too fast and, and, you know, this game, as you know, and you've, you've correctly told me many times, is a long-term relationship business. The last thing you want to do is, is take some investor down some path so they get that one closing and they're, they're not that repeat buyer for you. So the yeah, thing right. I wish I had, um, and we'll just talk about Fresno because we both know it, I would have lucked that, loved that first agent uh, to, to somehow either in, in an email or some kind of co- conversation say, hey, you don't really know our market, right? Because right? That you could have asked me how many times you've been to Fresno and I said zero, right? Yeah. You, th- that first uh, agent could have come to me and said, you know what, let's focus you on 93728. This is two, you know, early 2000s, right? Yeah. right. Let's, let's focus you on the Tower District. Um, you know, let's maybe focus you on the Mayfair. I don't know that I would do that today, but back in 2003, Mayfair was great, right? So yeah. I wish I had more of that. I kind of stumbled through that. And I'm sure most of that was my problem because I'm type A and I think I can do everything myself. But, right. you know, this, this recording is meant to help agents and buyers. I think the agent that takes this meeting and goes, Hey, here's a map of Fresno. Let me color code it for you here. Here's the green ones, right? Green means go. Oh, by the way, a little more expensive. Yellow means, you know, be careful. And you know, (laughs) if you're a new investor, here's a couple of red spots, you know, maybe the new, maybe your first buy is not on the West side, for example. Um, Right. You know, just as an example, not trying to throw anything under the bus because I own lots of stuff on the West side. I don't know that I start there, but that that's a different story. Um, but that's the kind of stuff I wish I had. I wish I would have, I wish my partner, they, that partner would have, would have earned my loyalty immediately if they would have given me that map as opposed to, well, I'm going to try that agent. I'm going to try that agent. I'm going to try that agent. If somebody would have taken me by the horn and the good news is right. when you work in Fresno or any market, you create that map once you create that template once you yep. send it to all your new buyers and suddenly you're like, oh my God, he's giving me the Rubik's cube. I can, I'm, I'm playing Tetris with the man or the woman. And uh, that's yeah. what I would tell agents to get, get, get on uh, immediately is, you know, pretend like you're a new investor. That's, you know, a state away. Uh, right. Pretend like they've never been in your hometown. Do a, you know, green, yellow, red, cause everybody kind of gets it or do, you know, one, two, three, if you think people are colorblind, but I think that's something yeah. I wish I had had. Yeah, and, and uh, that was actually one of the things I spent a lot of time on. So for any agent out there who's really wanting to figure out how can we crack the code, and, and maybe, I mean, you just hit on it, and I was fortunate enough. I, I went and looked. Uh, back then, we had a map store. We don't yeah. have one now. Yeah. I, pick, I picked up a bunch of ba- uh, maps. You could probably call the EDC. You can probably, you know, check, you know, the airport. But, you know, uh, I went and got a map, and I basically put it out in front of my little cubicle. I had a small cubicle. And, uh, and I was doing what you were saying. And I was basically outlining the areas that I knew that there was uh, healthy growth or a lot of, you know, flip opportunities. Cause at the time that's what, you know, this yeah. particular investor was in and then, you know, giving him those updates and showing him what, you know um, what the, the, the annual, you know, increases or, you know, what the inventory market was looking like. And so, um, but yeah, but I, on the other side of that, so, you know, let me ask a, let me ask a question, sure. what, you know, kind of on the other side of that coin, what's one of the things that you think an agent can, can do to basically not even get that opportunity out of the gate? You know, is there something that they could say that, that they may say to an investor that says, you know what, maybe they're not quite ready. You know, what are some of the red flags when, when dealing with an agent? Yeah. So I just want to make sure. So we're asking, um, so I'm the investor and I'm calling an agent. I'm looking for agent red flags. 
or investor yeah, like flags. oh man or an, an agent red flags yeah like you as an investor be like yeah. you know what they're not quite ready to handle my level of, of yeah. you know investment even if you were newer right yeah I, I guess the big red flag for me and i think it is for most most people if i get any kind of feel from that first phone conversation or any of those early conversations trying to like the top the first three where if i sense that you're only in it for the money right if you're in real estate right, investing right. and you're so so eager and hungry and so so pushing so hard to write an offer and just all those things because again I, I think it's at least understood by most that right. you get paid when the transaction happens but that shouldn't feel I don't want my agent or anyone to feel that they're only doing something for that that commission I mean that's the I, you sense it on some people when people get desperate yeah um, you, I don't know if it's true, but you at least have a sense that they're going, if there's a, if there's a gray area, they're going to go, they're going to lean towards getting the commission as opposed to saying, Hey, stop, something's wrong with the inspection or I overheard this or I overheard that, um, right. that would, that would kill the deal or potentially kill the deal. Um, that's, that's probably the biggest red flag is when I don't think my partner, which is how I view my agents that I work with as my partner, I think their motivation, they put their motivation above mine. Right. Well, we're, you know, at minimum, we're going to have a conversation and we, we may just stop working together. No, oh, that's a great point. And uh, I, one of the reasons I, I asked that, is, and you pretty much hit it right on the head, you know, obviously you want to work with determined agents, but I've also, you know, uh, as a broker, I've seen that there are people that do put their knee, you know, unfortunately, maybe they're in a tough spot. And sometimes yeah. it's just a short period of time, you know, they're having a bad week, but, you know, um, never letting that that linger because they, they, lo they lose out on the long-term opportunities and relationships. And that's really what it's about yeah. is building that relationship. And sometimes we, we feel as agents, and this is what I, as a broker, cause you know, we, we do our scripts and dialogues. We're working with buyers, how to pre-qualify, you know, your first time yeah. home buyer, your experience in listing. And, you know, not too many brokerages will, will, will talk about investors, but mm -hmm. you know, and then when they do, and it, it's in the context of, well, you know, they're, they're not emotion based mm -hmm. It's just, you know, show them the numbers. But relationships do have a level of emotion. They want to show that you're invested, and not in the, the to the extent where their the commission breath is is yeah. coming across. It's you know they're they're determined, and I love these guy you know this yeah. Gallagher uh, guy, yeah. and and I could see me myself working with them for a long period of time. Yeah, I think I think what you just nailed on there is is uh, one of the reasons I don't have a lot of agents that I've done dozens of deals with. I have a couple of agents where I've done three to five transactions together. Um, uh -huh. but it's sort of that, it's sort of that mindset of, you know what, um, owner occupant, first time buyers and then comma or semicolon or whatever. And then we talk about investors. Um, I know that investors have the perceived notion that it's all about the numbers. And, and, and if you're truly an investor, you won't do a deal if the numbers don't work. Um, right. but lots of investors that I know of are emotion based and, and they want to feel that there's a real relationship or bridge that's mutually beneficial both ways because um, you know, we could go anywhere, right? We, we could, we could choose to work with you or someone else. We could try these stupid online brokers now that are not, you know, it, you know just all that, that nonsense that's out yeah. there. Um, right. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of agnostic that way. Cause again, as, as buyers, the seller pays for all that stuff. Right. So. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like it, and that's the one thing, you know, when I, when I became, an, you know, when I was a new agent, I remember the sales manager because it was at a time when, you know, the, the prices were getting at the bottom and that, yeah. that bell was about to ring. And so we had a slew of investors coming from every which way. And I yeah. remember having guys that I went to school with and I said, Hey, I came into, you know, a, a couple coins and, and I want to invest. I want to flip. I want to flip. And everybody was saying, yeah. I want to flip. And then I got to the point where I was saying, get the flip out of here. Yeah. Because your, yeah. Your, your commitment level to the process. Um, is going to be a detriment in the long term, you know. Yep. And, and uh, but but back to that sales manager, he, he did teach me, you know, that hey, um, a client's a client, right? Yes. And whatever you know, establish their objective, and uh, establish their time frame, and, and how and see how you can, you know, basically fill in the pieces. But and that's why I keep going back to you know that time frame because if they're saying, hey, I'm just I kind of want to get this going and, yeah. and here you are going gangbusters and they're like, well, I'm still six months, six months out. Then, then you take that negative energy that you have from, you know, yeah. basically spinning your wheels because you never established that you had the false expectations and then you tell other people, well, Hey, working with investors, they just burn you. Yeah. Well, you never established the expectation up front. That's why you feel burned. 
Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think one, I think that the scarcest resources we all have um, is time and, and, yeah. and specifically selling or productive time, right. in that research and all that phase. And um, that's the one thing I want investors to appreciate when you, when you reach out and ask an agent to do something, whether they're a new agent or very experienced, you're asking for slivers of their time. They're never going to get back and you need to be respectful and you need to answer the questions they ask. An, an agent who qualifies their investor is going to save themselves time. And an investor should not never feel put out because an investor is asking them questions. They have to qualify you, right? right. There are right. lots of investors who go to some silly boot camp or they read some book and then they call, they, you know, they open a, I don't know, Facebook or with phone books around. And they go, I'm going to call so-and-so. And, you know, that's... Um, you need to be qualified and you should, you should actually take being qualified as a sign of a good agent, not Perfect. feel defensive. Uh, is that, that's great. Answer. Well, so going to that pre-qual stage, you know, there are times and, and I was one of these guys. So mm -hmm. let me, let me give you kind of an idea. And, and if there's any agents listening out there, this is one of the first things I always show my agents as a, a value proposition of what I, the work that I put in mm -hmm. um, because I was, you know, I'd show up early and I'd say, well, if there was nothing to do, right, um, I would go to look for the, the value of the day. And then with that value of the day, I'd click on the tax record. Then I'd pull up the map of the neighborhood. Then I would basically, um, I'd go around that property and then I'd, I'd, uh, I'd export that Excel spreadsheet of those owners. Then I would sort it by the owner's name. And then I would look to see if there were any LLCs. I'd go to the you know, um, business search and I'd find a name of, of reference and then and I'd call. I'd say, hey, it looks like there's a great property that popped up in a neighborhood that you own multiple homes in. So the reason for my call is calling to see if you plan on buying. Well, years back, they'd be like, well, what's it going for? Oh, great. That's a deal. Let, you know, uh, yeah. let me call my agent. Oh, darn. They already have an agent. Oh, well, you know, I'm not working with that agent anymore. You know, yeah, I'd love to see it with you. Then I'd pre-qualify them. In today's market, it's, wait, how much is it? Yeah, that's no longer a deal. Well, in that case, are you interested in selling? Yeah. yeah. So in some, in most instances, they're like, ah, you know, I'm not doing anything right now. And I tell them, okay. And I tell the agents, okay, well, would it be okay if I keep in contact? So that's where I'm kind of leading up to. What do you think is the best way to stay in contact with an out of area investor and what information do they truly find valuable? That's a good question. So uh, I'm going to give you my answer. And to date, I can, I can think of only two agents that have routinely done this for me, but I would put them probably on a 90 day cycle. Uh, mm -hmm. to either call or email them, depending on how that person prefers to communicate or both. Uh, but actually what I would do is I'd send a quick, because usually an investor likes the same stuff, right? Yeah. They're small apartment buyers, they're single family home buyers, they're duplexes through quad buyers. You know, they, they all kind of type out because they get economies of scale and all that stuff. But For I would sure. send them a 90 day summary, very short, but it's, it shows work and make it the more template, the better for you because you save time. But hey, just so you know, this is what's gone on in the area, right? You, you bought in these areas. Just so you know, over the last 90 days, 136 have sold. The average price went up from X to Y. Um, you know, the right. trend is now, I don't know, decelerating, right? Probably. Um, which means, oh, by the way, if you ever happen to sell, this might be the top, right? So just, you know, wet the whistle there. Um, uh -huh. I would talk about the news of the day, which is at least in, what I see in the MLS is, you know, price reductions are more common days on market are increasing. Uh, I would yeah. just do that kind of facts because most of the out of town investors have a day job. Yeah. They are likely only looking when they have cash or they see cash in their future. Right. Most of them are deep pocket and, and constantly buying. Um, so, so appreciate that. So if you could bring them a, 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 a cadence of, of every 90 days that says, hey, here's four paragraphs, right? It can't be seven pages because we won't read it. But if it's four pages sure. about my money, I, I'm going to get four paragraphs. I'm going to read it, right? This right. is where you buy. This is what's happened the last 90 days. This is my kind of thoughts on it, right? So be, you, you have every right to give your opinion and then right. say the closing is, oh, by the way, if you're looking to buy or sell, call me. I'd love to help you, right? So, so close with a call to action. Oh. Huh. Well, and that's awesome. I mean, that's, you know, those are some of the things that we encourage agents to do, to do it the right way, right? And obviously stay consistent. As you mentioned, there's not many that, that will, uh, they'll eventually fall off. But, yep. um, you know, we got to bring something of value. And we figure, you know, you're, you have, most of them have a day job. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's hard for them to stay that in tune with what's going on in the local market. And then on another factor is there's a lot of those agents that maybe sold them properties five, 10 years ago that are no longer in the market. Yeah. You know? So why not? Yeah. I, I really think, I mean, if you really created the template, right. And it's only four paragraphs, kind of the closing paragraphs, the same all the time. I'm always open. Call me if you want to do something, buy or sell. Right. So really you're only talking about three paragraphs. And really paragraph one is kind of just basic stats. So you just change the numbers. The only paragraph that would really change is what do you think's happening in the market? And I'd be brutally honest. I wouldn't be always, oh, the uh, it's sunshine and, and rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. Don't do that because as investors, we watch the market every day. We know what's going on. We, you know, CNBC's in our head saying the negative things. So, so if you're honest and direct, oh, wow, I think the market's getting soft you know, your, your respect level and, and the chances that I get to paragraph number four and call you is, 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 uh, is very likely. Got it. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Is there any, um, any questions or thoughts, you know, from, from a broker standpoint, you know, what that relationship or what our thoughts are on? Well, I, you know, this is the one that, that I've always wondered is, and it's because of transaction volume. Most of the agents, sort of look like, feel like, act like, um, you know, open houses and, and owner occupants and, and, and first time buyers. And that's kind of their bread and butter, kind of one transaction. I wonder if you have any thoughts or opinions why more agents have said, you know what, I'm not doing owner occupants anymore. I only want to do investors. Yeah. I think the agents that have made that decision have looked at, um, I looked at the market stats. I, I mean, when your affordability is shrinking yeah. and, and you start to see that, you know, uh, the majority of your buyers, I mean, and when California's becoming a renter state, yeah. you know, you have, you have to adapt and, and figure a way that you can still be able to service, you know, um, a demand that's, that's rising. And so I, I definitely have seen more agents uh, go that route. Mm -hmm. And also I think, you know, kind of history starts to repeat itself in a sense where, you know, when I first got in the business, uh, I mean, let's go way back. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have, you know, some mentors that have been in the business going on 50 years. And when they got in the business, you bought and sold real estate a lot on your own. And then you help people do the same. So you, it, it made you a better strategist. And nowadays, you know, your value proposition has to be that much stronger. You have to be able to say, well, I personally buy and sell real estate and know mm. how to, you know, leverage that in a really good reason. And that's why you want to choose me so that I can also help you with those decisions. I like it. And, and, you know, and, and when you think back to, I remember when my parents bought a home, the gal who sold it, I mean, she was property manager. She owned a ton of investments and it's like, how can she lead you astray? She's doing it herself. Uh, I you think know? that, I think, I think, uh, I, I'll just say it this way. I'll just be black and white. I think more real estate agents and certainly brokers should own rental properties uh, for that yeah. reason. Right. You, you, you immediately go up the respect level because you're in the game, right? You've made those financial decisions. You've made the commitments. You've put real money at risk. Uh, I, right. I think that's a genius move. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I'm a big sports guy, so I liken it to, you know, playing the game. You're able to see, the, you know, you're under, you understand when it's fourth quarter and the game's on the line, you know, the emotions and, and everything else that goes into it rather than just being in the skybox and kind yeah. of pointing to some X's and O's, you know? And, and uh, not to say, you know, there are some really good coaches who have never played. So, you know, I, especially for those agents that don't, don't own a property yet, but they have aspirations, they've yeah. got the right people around them, that, that will happen in time. Sure. Um, but I, I've just come to learn that those people that can navigate you through the seas a little better are seasoned and, and have yeah. weathered the storms themselves. And, and quite frankly, and even when everything fell, fell down, I mean, they were like, Hey, it took my lumps, but you get back up. And, and how did you, how did you get back up? Yeah. You know? So that's awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, let's, let's, um, cause you, you started the broke, uh, no, you were an agent in 09. So that was kind of the, yeah. the it was, uh, it was scaling down or, or the world was, was collapsing yeah. the prices every, every week. Right. I remember every Friday, whack, price drop, price drop, price drop. Oh yeah. Uh, I remember oh, yeah. those times. It was fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about, um, yeah, let's talk about a buyer's market. Uh, we'll go to a seller's market in a minute. Cause I think it's fair yeah. to say we, we have been in a seller's market for five years. Mm -hmm. Can we argue that we're still in one? Maybe. Uh, I think yeah. it's pretty soon going to be a flat market, but let's not talk yeah. about, it. let's talk about a buyer's market. So just for a time frame, let's think 2009 through 12. Right. Right. Kind of time frame. Um, I guess my biggest question is, is, uh, 
that a lot of agents washed out in that time, yeah. right? We had record participation back in 06, 07. A lot of agents wiped out. Uh, but uh, a lot of buyers disappeared also. Uh, yeah. And um, I, I'm curious from a, an, a, a, you know, somebody in the business who was seeing price drops like that. What was it like being an agent with all these out-of-town investors? I'm sure you were getting phone calls all the time saying, give me a deal, give me a deal, give me a deal, give me a deal. I mean, how do you deal yeah. with that environment? You know, a, a pre, a strong pre-qualifying, you know, to yeah. figure out, you know, what, what, you know, how, how is your commitment level? Because I did have to fire, you know, I remember agents were firing investors <laughs> left and right because, you know, they weren't uh, both on both sides, weren't setting sure. realistic expectations, but um you know, uh, it was, uh, if somebody was coming through saying, Hey, I, w I want the deal, I want the deal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, really being upfront with them, allowing me to get you to the deal, you yeah. know, and, and you know, what is your, what is your confidence in me? And why well, I just met you, you know, on the phone or I've been talking for 10 minutes on the phone. So obviously it's slow. Yeah. Well, I think some agents really had to put together their game plan and say, okay, well, if I could provide you with this game plan, we can execute, you know, are, are you all in? And, uh, that old saying scared money doesn't make money. I remember yeah. a lot of people that were like, Oh no, I'm, I'm a real investor. And here you are bringing up the deal and they're not pulling the trigger because there's not enough skin on the game for them. Then you take somebody else and, you know, to this day, they're making money cash over fit or, you know, <laughs> hand over fist. And, yep. Yeah. And then, you know, so I, I really think it had to do with, uh, you know, as an agent, you do have to have that value proposition to earn, you know, to earn that trust. And then for the out of, out of town person, you know, out of town investor, you know, they also had to be realistic and understanding yeah. that, look, there's a, er, there's a lot of people calling the sign. Yeah. There's a lot of people calling every agent. Um, so what are, what's your commitment level long-term as well? Yeah. I think what yeah. you just said is something investors, at least most of them don't appreciate. And that is the right for the agent to fire them. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to work with you. I'm not going to return your phone call because a, you've wasted my time or B you were not loyal or, <laughs> or whatever. And um, I think investors need to appreciate that reason being is because I think we're going into a market that is going to be, Probably more like, I don't know, maybe 08, 09, kind of a top market. Maybe the high end collapses, the low end, I think, is safe. Yeah. That's <clears> what I'd say. Yeah, I think so. And um, I just think we need to appreciate that, that, um, that out of state investors, you can be fired. And I think if you appreciate that, you're going to hold yourself more accountable. Because I, I, think, I think every yeah, investor sure. goes, my money's green, my money's long, <coughs> I don't care who works with me. And that's just, that's just not okay. You know, you brought up a good point. And I do remember because I was one of those guys that was calling a lot of investors and I was getting, mm -hmm. I was sitting on floor back then there was floor time because, mm -hmm. you know, they weren't online. Uh, they had to call the brokerage direct and, um, and I, and I'd hear them and the things that they would say. And there was definitely the sense of entitlement because my money's green, it's long, you know, and mm -hmm. Hey, cash is King. And, and, and as like you, you started to get into 2000, you know, 10, 11, 12, um, there, there started to be a better sense of loyalty. And even, you know, as an agent, I started to see, you know, the, the flippers and some of those that were buying in, in bulk, you know, who, who they were starting to basically align themselves with. Some of it was strategic because maybe they had an REO account or they knew how to execute on short sales better, yep. you know, but Hey, it, it all worked out. Mm -hmm. and, and even when I was taking some of those calls, you would hear that, uh, Hey, you know what? I've had a bad experience with another agent. I am committed. If somebody's willing to bring me, you know, kind of, you scratch my back, you, I'll scratch yours. And, and I started to see, you know, kind of those punches and bunches where it was working out. Yeah. Um, so there was better sense of loyalty. I think there's always that filling out stage. And I think, you know, as we do start to, to shift, uh, we're going to have to show each other where, you know, how and where we provide our value to one another for a long-term yeah. relationship. Yeah. So here's a question for you to think about. So let's assume we get by our first 10 minute or 15 minute conversation. You send me that follow-up email that outlines, Hey, look here, don't look here. Um, how can, how should you, how should I be expected to be tested? Right. Because that's, that first phone call yeah. is a first, you know, it's, it's a, it's a conversation at a bar, right? You don't know where you're going, but right, right. that next communication is going to be the meaningful one and mm -hmm. people need to be tested, at least in my opinion. Right. So how would you, you know, how would you like to be tested as the agent? And then, you know, you have every right to test your buyer. What, what do you, what do you think about that next conversation or communication? Yeah, actually, I had something in place that I used to do. I used to send them a property that I felt was something that may have already um, been pending. 
mm -hmm. and because the, we were able to track it because the, chances are it was about to close escrow within a week or two. Yeah. And I'd say, now tell me, you know, th based off of the research that I'm doing, based off of the, the amount of offers that went in on this, this is where I feel the property should sell. You know, now will this number work for you? And then they would say, nope, that number is too high and this <laughs> is why. And then it would close and it would close at a number, you know, maybe yeah. a number that we both didn't agree on, but, and then they'd say, well, somebody was willing to pay 15,000 more than you were, right? And, yeah. And, now, is that going to work for you right now? Probably not. Well, that's the environment we're in. So I'd have to show them a few oh, instances on genius. what the market was doing. And then I would call those agents to let them know how many offers they were. And then there was one time where I, I ran through that exercise with, with the investor. He was in San Francisco. He drove down and he wanted to come in substantially low on a property. I said, that's not going to work. And right. I said, well, you know what? I, I know this agent. Let's get him on the phone. So I called the agent right in front of the property. I said, hey, how's it going? Great. Hey, I'm in front of 123 Main Street. Um, <laughs> I'm here with a buyer. I, I just want to know how many offers do you have on the table already? Brandon, we've already got like four or five offers. Okay. How many are at or above asking price? She's like, they're all above asking price. Okay. Now, um, cash, you know, it started kind of fishing. Yeah. I understand she had her fiduciary, but uh, I was still able to get enough. And then I said, okay, well, you've, helped, you've been helpful. Thank you for your time. And so every now and again, obviously you're establishing trust. I mean, it's not like, yeah. you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. I mean, where the yeah. trust is a little different, but you know, sometimes you have to kind of walk them through that, you know, to show them, look, I'm not BSing, you know, yeah. and I want what's best for you. And you heard it straight from, you know, the source that we've yeah. got to be competitive. And, and at that point, you know, they start to understand that, Hey, your research, your exercises are working and, and your, your, your network is going to help work for me too. They need to understand that that network can help them and their net worth. And so, yeah. um, so that's worked in the past and, and who's to say, I, you know, there's other techniques, right? I think that is genius. And I have never heard that or, or experienced that. And I think that's, that's a gem both for agents that are watching this, but also for investors that are watching this is I think we all should expect this relationship, right? That test phase, that second meeting or discussion is I think, I think looking at a property that's, generally meets your criteria and saying, does that number work? I think that's genius. And then backing it up with, Oh, by the way, if you say no, it doesn't work. Well, there's, there's, you know, 17 offers it's pending. It's the next door neighbor close for X or Y. Uh, I think yeah. you're going to find, I think you're both are going to find out something because I think you're going to find out the realtor knows what they, what they're talking about. And the investor, you're going to have to make a choice because either a, you don't know the market, which right. If you live in San Francisco, it's, it's really hard to know Fresno in this example, yeah. but but I'm talking to people all the time going, I'm buying in Cleveland or I'm buying in Indianapolis. I'm like, have you ever been there? I'm like, nope. I'm yeah. like, well, dad, what are you kidding me? What are you doing? So, you know, yeah. you, 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 you need to build that trust. And I love that test fit phase. I think that is um, no wonder you're so wildly successful because you can weed out yeah. people quickly because that's part of your job, right? right? You get a hundred phone calls. Yeah. 20 of them are money. The other 80 are time wasters. And what you've just done is you've, what you've created a way that you're probably going to weed out 60 immediately. Maybe you're left yeah. with the 20 buyers and the other 20 kind of, but shoot, 40 is better than 100. Right. Well, and, and nowadays, I think with social media and, and you know, with there being these investment groups and the meetups and everything, it, it's pretty neat to see these networks start to grow across, you know, the United States mm -hmm. where, you know, you can contact, like I'm a part of a coaching system. And so if I need it, you know, I had a client that bought in Idaho. Yeah. Everybody from California is going to Idaho. It's yeah. true. <laughs> but uh, so I, I contact them and, and I needed somebody uh, for a specific neighborhood and a specific property type, right? Yeah. And we're able to identify it. Same, same being said, I had a client who wanted to start investing in Ohio, right? Yeah. And so we found out who's the best agent within this network, not just for single family luxury homes. We wanted the investment specialist and yeah. they were able to target. Uh, so it's, it's nice that the network, you know, and all the social media and everything else going out, we have so many outlets to kind of really, you know, fine tune the, the, the top talent. Yeah. I think that's a genius move again, because again, these referrals and these connections that you can establish, um, you know, we've already mentioned California is becoming a renter uh, state. I think that's absolutely true. And it's only going to get worse. I think as time goes by it's worse, meaning higher percentage. Um, so you're going to see a lot more investors going, you know, whether it's Idaho or Ohio or Michigan or wherever it is, it's, it just seems like it's, it's going that direction. So, um, yeah. you know, as we sort of look to wrap up this discussion where, you know, what is, you know, what is that kind of golden or what is your, your, I don't know what you call it, your, your investor type or your golden investor? Or what does a great investor look like to Brandon? 
A great investor looks like to me, somebody that shows me their system, just the way that I'm going to show them their system, right? And that, uh, and we feel that it's truly a partnership. You know, anybody that I ever flipped properties with, or, you know, I helped them buy their investment properties. I, I almost felt like I was a business partner, not just, you know, their, their real estate advisor. Yeah. You know, I'm looking into all the ins and outs of real estate, the aspects of real estate, but you know, we're, we're walking through this together. You know, I'm the fullback, they're the running back, however you yep. want to look at it. Yep. But um, you know, they go as far as showing, you know, they're, they're very transparent in their numbers and the numbers that they, that they've got to get. Then it becomes a, a goal that I want to help them reach, you know, okay, well, Hey, if I can help cut through this, you know, then let's help you get to that point. So I, I think transparency in that relationship is huge. And, uh, and so that when they see any commissions that you may get, that you may get, or that you may be gypped out of, depending on how the deal comes together, yeah. they understand that, you know, everybody's got to pay to play at some point and that becomes an equitable relationship and those last a lot longer. So that's one of the things that I really look for is somebody that understands that it's got to be an, an equitable relationship to make it work and make it a win-win down the road. Yeah. And I, I think, I think you nailed it. I, I think, um, you know, maybe not in the first phone conversation, but certainly once you get past the test with me and, and if an agent asks for my kind of system or where I'm at in my numbers, um, I'm going to share it with them. Right. Cause I want them as a part of my team. And it, cause again, I appreciate that you're selling time. So if I can show you where I'm at, you know, in my system, in my formulas, you can probably weed out half the things we'd be talking about, which saves you time, but also saves me time. Right. I'm a busy Absolutely, full-time yeah. employee, travel all over, blah, blah, blah. Right. If we're talking about 12 properties instead of 50, I'm, I'm a lot happier. Uh, and that's because we should share our systems. And the fact that you, you think you're some magical investor and you want to keep it all hidden, that's, you know, that's a scarcity mindset. You're not going to go far in this business by doing that. So, um, you know, after, yeah, after you sort of build that relationship, it's okay to hold it to your tested, but then uh, share away fully. Yeah. And I, I, let me see if I have it here. I may. Um... I do. So I've got, believe it or not, I'm pretty organized, but it just so happens I've got some things near and dear to my heart. So I met with this investor well over a year ago. It's Pinnacle Investments LLC. It's Jason Pritchard. You yep. know, he's, yep. uh, you guys do, do work together and have collaborated. And the first time I sat down with him, Tahoe Joe's, not only could I see that, hey man, this guy's on fire and he's going to be something big, but he had a system about himself and that made me want to invest my time in helping him find the right projects. I mean, the way that he broke down all the numbers, the way that every, you know, he had examples and he had past examples of what had worked and what he expected. And we as agents have to do the same. And when you meet in the middle, yeah. I mean, you don't want, the investor doesn't want to waste their time because they see how about what a value they are and vice versa. We don't want to waste their time because we see what a value they are. And it, said it better. here we are today. And yeah. So. Yeah, but I appreciate you having me on here, Michael. You're doing big things. And, uh, uh, just just, glad, glad just trying to help going. a little, just trying to help people along and, and you know, bringing people with the knowledge and skill sets such as yourself uh, helps, helps everyone. So I appreciate your time, Brandon. Much appreciate it. Likewise. Well, have a great one. All right, buddy. Take care. All right. You too.